If you want to check out more topical math IGCSE past papers, head to Edify Right. Here you can simply choose a topic and start practicing. If you get stuck, we have video solutions for every question to help you understand the concept better. A dice is rolled 100 times, the frequency table shows the result. So this is the frequency table. You have the score and you have the frequency. Uh, find the range. The range is pretty simple. The upper score minus the lower score is the range, which is 6 minus 1, which is equal to 5. Mode. Mode is the value with the highest frequency. So what is the value with the highest frequency? This is the highest frequency and the corresponding value is 2. So this is my mode. The median. So median is the mid value. So as you can see here, the mid value, the middle observation lies over this zone. So I get the median as three. So median is basically if you were to lay out all these scores from uh, lower to higher, basically in ascending order, what is the middlemost value? So for me, it falls in this box where the score is three. So that's my median. Next, 50 students answer a mathematics question. The table shows the time t seconds taken by each student to answer the question. Calculate an estimate of the mean. So this is pretty straightforward. To get the mean, you have to multiply the frequency with the x, the observation, summation of frequency with the observation divided by summation of frequency. This is how you get mean. Now, if you observe, here the observation is not a singular value. It's a range in each box. So how do you get a single value? You just take the average of these two. So for here, um, the average is what? 15. And here the average is 22.5. Here it's 27.5. Here it's 40. And here it's 65. So now you have um, the values of x. And you have the frequencies as well. So let's go ahead and use this formula to find out the mean. So that would be mean equal to 2 times 15 plus 22.5 times 8 plus 27.5 times 12 plus 40 times 16 plus 65 times 12 divided by summation of frequencies that's 2 plus 8 plus 12 plus 16 plus 12. So when you do this calculation you get mean to be 39.2 that's what the mean here is. Jean asked 600 people to choose their favorite sport and the pie chart shows some of this information. Now show that 100 people choose tennis. So this is pretty simple just take the angle for tennis that is 60 divided by 360 and multiply it with the total number of people which is 600 in this case. So that's 60 by 360 into 600. This is equal to 100. So 100 people play tennis. Work out how many people choose rugby. So rugby again the percentage over here is 27. So I'm going to divide that with 360 and multiply it with total number of people which is 600. So I get 45. 45 people choose rugby. Next, 125 people choose cricket and the rest choose swimming. Complete the pie chart to show this information. All right. So let's say that the number of people who choose uh, swimming or let's say cricket is uh, x. So x by 360 into 600 should give me 125. And when you solve this, you get x equal to 75 degrees. So the um, angle for cricket should be 75. What is the angle for swimming? That's the only option left. So you're going to take 360 and subtract all the other angles, which is 105, 60, 27 and 75. And you get 93 degrees as the answer. So use this information. You'll have... This is let's say 75 which is cricket and this is let's say 93 which is swimming. That's it. Next the height of some plants are measured. 
so this these are the five uh, bullet points by given on the grid draw a box in whisker plot to show this information so all the information is readily laid out for you guys all you have to do is plot so we'll start from the extreme left a box in whis whisker plot it looks like this you have five critical lines this is the lowest value possible this is the highest value possible this line stands for upper quartile, this line stands for lower quartile and this line stands for the median. So let's start with the extreme left. So on the extreme left, we have the smallest height, which is 0.6. So let me just jot this down. This is 0.6. Next, um, you have the range range is 8.1 okay so basically range is higher value minus lower value so you're given the range you're not given the higher value so all you have to do is take this to the other side higher value is basically range plus lower value so that is 8.1 plus 0 0.6 so that would be 8.7 So this is my higher value. Next, the median is 5.2. So let me just draw it over here. 5.2. The lower quartile is 3.4. So that would be somewhere over here. The upper quartile, the interquartile range is 4.1. So the interquartile range is again the difference between the higher and the lower. So if you add 4.1, uh, to 3.4 you'll get the upper quartile range so that would be 7.5 so let me just somewhere over here now join these two points that's it so this is how you get a box and whisker plot the table shows some values of y equal to 3 plus 4x minus x square and this is the range of values of x and you're asked to fill out the diagram for the first question fill out the table for the first question so let's do that this is pretty simple you just have to take the x value and substitute in this equation you'll get the corresponding y value so let me do it for this box um, so that would be y equal to 3 plus 4 into the corresponding x is minus 0 0.5 minus minus 0.5 whole square and when you solve this you get y equal to 0 0.75 so in this box this is 0 0.75 similarly just substitute the values of x you get corresponding y so this would be 3 7 3 0 0.75 that's it so that's with the first question that's how you complete the table and this is of three marks as you can see Next, on the grid, draw the graph of y equal to 3 plus 4x minus x square. So now that you have the coordinates over here, use these coordinates, jot these coordinates onto the graph and draw the graph. So this is what the graph looks like. Next, write down an integer value of k for which the equation 3 plus 4x minus x square equal to k has no solutions. So as you can see, the maximum point for this uh, graph is uh, k, y equal to 7. So any point beyond 7 will have no solution. So you can, you can uh, say, let's say 8. So if the value of y is 8, you will have no solutions. All right, so here we have by drawing a suitable straight line on the grid, solve the equation. So for this question, there are four steps that you have to follow. The first thing is obviously find the equation of the line. That's the first thing that you're supposed to do. Next, using that equation, draw the line onto the graph. Now, after doing this, you get two points of intersection. So take those points of intersection and find out at what points, at, at what values of x do they intersect. So let's start with finding the equation of the line. So the way you do it is take the existing uh, equation, 
and my 2x minus x square equal to 0. I am going to split minus 1 and 9 by 2x and I will show you the reason in a minute. So I get 3 minus 4 plus 4x plus half x minus x square equal to 0. So I have 3 plus 4x minus x square equal to 4 minus half x. So I am just going to take um, 4 and minus uh, 1 by 2 to the other side. So this is equal to this is in the form of y equal to mx plus c. So basically I can consider this as a straight line and draw it on the grid. So if this is y equal to mx plus c, what is my m? m is equals to minus 1 by 2 and c is equals to 4. Now we know the equation of the line but to draw the line we need at least two points right to uh, plot the points on the graph. So let's do that. Let my first point, let's just substitute x equal to 0. When I substitute x equal to 0, I get y equal to 4. I'll show you how. So if we take this, we have y equal to 4 minus half x. So I'm going to substitute x equal to 0, I get y equal to 4. So that's exactly how I got 0 comma 4. Now let's assume that x is equals to 4, let's say. If x is equals to 4, then y is equals to 4 minus 1 by 2, 4, which is equal to 2. y is equals to 2. So the other point is 4 comma 2. So these are the two points. So now since I got the two points, I can plot this graph and see where it intersects. And it intersects at two points. It intersects at 0.25 and 4.25 as you can see from the graph. So this is how you solve this 4 mark question. The cumulative frequency diagram shows information about the height and meters of each of 100 students. So this is the graph over here and we are given the height of the tallest student is 1.83 meters and the height of the shortest student is uh, 1.45 meters. So we have the tallest and the shortest values and we are asked to draw a box and whisker plot for the heights of the 100 students. Now to draw the box and whisker plot, you need five things. First is the lowest value possible from the data. Next is the highest value. And then you have upper quartile. You have lower quartile and then median. So you have to know the values of each of these things to draw a proper box and whisker plot. So let's try to derive all these values. Uh, the lower and highest values are already given. Let's try to find the, find the rest of the three um, values over here. So here, as you can see, we have the cumulative frequency ranging from 0 to 100 on the y-axis. Now, the first thing that you do is split this 0 to 100 part into quartiles, which means basically in chunks of 25. So let's do that here. So let's say that 21, 22, 23, 24. This is 30. So this is where 25 it probably lies. So let me just draw a line over here and see where it touches that would be this point so it touches at four five six seven it touches at 1.57 all right so we got the lower quartile here this gives us the lower quartile and then we have the median which is 50 so here we're gonna draw a line this is the thing So this is supposed to be 1.64, that's where the median is. And then the next 75, so 75 would be somewhere over here. All right, 1.71, that's it. We got our 
values for each of these now we just have to use these values and uh, draw the box and whisker so on the extreme left you have the lowest shortest student which is 1.45 this is the line and then you have next you have is lower quartile here we can see the lower quartile is 1.57 so this is where the lower quartile is and then you have the median in between that is 1.64 so this is where the median is and then you have the upper quartile which is 1.71 and then you have uh, the highest value possible which is 1.83 that's it so this is what the box and whisker plot looks like so this is what you do when you have the cumulative uh, frequency graph and you have to change it into box and whisker plot the first thing that you do is divide the y-axis divide the cumulative frequency into uh, chunks so that you have into 25 percent chunks so that you have lower quartile you have upper quartile and then you have the median as well and then using those values you can easily draw the box and whisker plot as shown here so that's how you answer this four mark question the table shows information about the mass in kilograms of each of 50 children. So here we have mass and here we have frequency. The first question is complete the cumulative frequency table. Okay, so all you have to do is just keep adding on the frequencies. So this 3 remains 3. The second box is 3 plus 19 which is 22. The third box is all of these combined. So that is 43. The next box is plus 5. So that is 48 and then plus 2 which is 50. So this is the table for cumulative frequency. Now on the grid draw a cumulative frequency diagram to show this information. So give me a second I'm just going to plot all these points. So here you have the coordinates right. So you have 3 comma 10, 22 comma 25. Um, sorry you have it the other way around because the y-axis is cumulative frequency and the x-axis is mass, right? So you have this as x-coordinates and this box as y-coordinates. So it's 10, 3, 25, 22, 35, 43, so on and so forth. So, so this is what the graph looks like. Next, use your diagram to find an estimate of the number of children with a mass of 32 kgs or less. So a mass of 32 kgs or less. So this is my, let's say, 32. So if I have to draw a line like this, it would meet somewhere over here. Over here. So it's approximately... 38 or 37 you can say so about 37 uh, children have a mass of 32 kgs or less